Yeah, another draft science video presentation. Um, so I will get to some specific comments and whatnot, but let's first, um, you know, I think it'd be a good idea just to resolve something, you know, in physics here. Commission a good experiment to prove something absolutely and completely. And so um, all of the critics and everybody can just agree on a good experiment that clarifies the fact, it makes it, illustrates it perfectly, completely. And we can one, say one way or another, this is what the truth is. So, you know, if you have any confidence in your physics, so far I haven't gotten a single pledge of anyone who wants to put up any money. So I'll put up, you know, three or four thousand um, dollars. <throat> and, you know, anybody can pledge against that amount, um, you know, and you get the money if the experiment proves you right. Okay. And I'm saying, of course, the experiment is already known to most physicists. <laughs> most people with a brain know what the answer is going to be. So you're out of luck. I mean, your formula doesn't work. Uh, it's never been useful in any sense. It's uh, an awful, silly, horrible mistake physics made. It's as bad. It's maybe worse than getting plus and minus wrong. It's so useless and meaningless and unevidenced and unproven and irrational and unuseful <laughs> and wrong. It's just completely wrong. It, there's not a single thing defending it. Uh, okay, I'll explain that. But anyway, all these people who think regular physics is so smart and so right, why aren't you flooding me with your willingness to defend your physics and bet in it, you know, invest in it? Why aren't you willing to invest in it? This is the simplest piece, right? This is some piece that's 200 years old. Why are you afraid to defend it? Okay, all of you Newton haters. Um, you know, Newton was an idiot, ha people. Um, because that's really what the formula was, I mean, invented by Newton's worst enemy in life. Uh, you know, and <clears throat> your physics embraced the silliness. Said, yes, let's go with the silly, living force, baby talk. It's obviously just a religious notion placed in the middle of your science. It doesn't belong there. It's, it's like I said, people like, religious people did better science. Mendel did better science than Leibniz, and, you know and the, the silly history of this idiotic formula, this kinetic energy baby talk. Um, it's useless nonsense. So anyway, I'll explain the experiment one more time. It's really quite simple. Um, it should already be somewhere. So if somebody can find a link to the experiment already being done, um, yeah, I'll pay you 50 bucks. <laughs> because it'd be worth getting this over with without even doing any work. Um, but yeah, I'll kind of ruin the whole betting thing because yeah, then they'll know they're, they're full of shit. But anyway, so let's do it. All right. Let's, let's prove some facts and, um, none of them are going to be on the side of this formula. There are no facts defending it. All you can do is contrive fake experiments like a Ken Wheeler. All you can do is show a Faro cell or some trick. Okay. But none of the good science can defend this silly formula. It's indefensible. It's garbage. <laughs> All right, so this is what the controversy is about, is the difference between momentum and kinetic energy. Now, I, you know, logically understand that momentum answers all the questions. You don't need anything else. Everything interacts in the universe based on momentum. A photon hitting something, it's momentum. An electron hitting something, it's momentum. Atom banging an atom, it's momentum. There's no such thing as kinetic energy. There's no such thing as any kind of notion that there's a one-half mv squared amount of energy in an object. An object just has its velocity and its mass, and only those two things can decide how, how much it can move. Okay, How much ability it has to move something is defined by how much mass it has and how much it can make that mass move into something. Period. That's all you got. That's your hands, your body. Everything works that way. Everything in the universe works that way. I bang two things of the same weight into each other. I get the same amount of energy out that I put in. I don't get any more. I can't bang a heavy thing into a light thing and make energy, free energy. That's what they believe. That's what conventional physics believe. If you, if you believe in the kinetic energy formula, you believe that you can make energy from nothing. Free. I mean, completely free of any mechanical batteries, electricity, <laughs> free of anything. You can just convert heavy things into light things and therefore make energy in the universe. That's what they believe. That's what their formula overtly says. Okay. So that's what we're betting on. 
okay? So put up or shut up. I mean, frankly, there's millions of you believers out there. Don't you want to make some free money just investing in your own beliefs? <laughs> you know, do your beliefs mean so little to you that you won't defend them? Oh, all right, so the simple experiment will be something like, so let's go, I'll do that one first, and then I'll do the history of this silly formula. But the simple experiment is going to be, we're going to take a spring first, okay, and we're going to compress the spring the exact same amount. And then we're going to put a, a ball that has two masses worth of uh, mass and one that has one mass worth of mass. Okay, it doesn't really matter what it is, right? And it's just going to roll on a track, and then it's going to hit another spring. Okay, and the the um, point being made is is that if I compress the spring exactly the same amount each time I do this, right? Same amount of compression in the spring, so it has the same number of joules of energy because that's how springs work. Springs are pretty good at giving you the same amount. That's why a scale works. Even in the old days, the old scales they actually worked. Because the spring always was, you know, 50 pounds pretty much. You had to adjust them a little tiny bit because the spring get old. But the fact is, is you compress the spring, you get a certain amount of energy out. That's it. It always works. So we get the same joules of energy going in. Their theory says that this thing is going to end up having twice as much energy. So if this was going to get, <laughs> you know, if this was uh, whatever. So, so this one's going to get, let's say, the heavy object we could... We'll use the formula and we'll say, you know, depending on the numbers we put in, let's just put an arbitrary number in, it'll get 250 joules of energy. They're going to say the same spring, same compression, same exact circumstance, it'll give this one 500 joules of energy. So all I have to do is put a lighter object on and I'll get more energy. And this is real energy. They say this is real kinetic energy, something you could really collect. And then we're just going to let it roll into another spring and their theory says, obviously, since this has 500 joules, twice as much energy, it should compress the spring more. So if the spring compresses one half, you know, when this one hits it, this one, they say, oh, it's three quarters or some amount. Like springs get progressively tighter, so it won't be exactly a half, but it'll compress the spring more. So they're saying the lighter object will compress the spring 500 joules more. So I'll get 500 joules of compression here, and I'll only get 250 joules of compression here. So this spring will only will compress to here, and this spring will compress all the way to here. That's their theory. That's what their formula overtly says. So that's what M <laughs> 1 half MV squared says. That's the reality. Okay, is that all I have to do is go with the lighter. I bet on the lighter thing, I get a lot more energy out. That's the controversy we're having. That's the argument. So for all these people who want to have this argument, who are going to keep saying I'm wrong about something, explain where I have cheated your physics here somewhere. Explain what mistake I made. How it doesn't work that way. How that isn't the truth. This will go twice as fast. Everybody knows that, right? <laughs> if I have the same gun and I put a lighter bullet in, it goes faster. Everybody knows this will go faster. So it'll have 1M and it'll have 2V. And this will go half as fast because it's twice as much, so it'll go, um, you know, one V. But they're saying this has twice as much energy. That's the science. Physics says, physics says, physics says, physics says, physics says. This is more certain than entanglement, more certain than superposition, more certain than any of their um, wooey, more certain than a neutrino, more certain than even a positron, is this formula of energy. And it's completely bullshit. There's not a single bit of it that makes any sense at all. You as a rational person, if you are rational, right? If you're not one of my haters, how can you, how can you, <laughs> this is obviously silly. It's obviously stupid. It makes no sense. You can't make energy by just putting lighter things on springs. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's too silly, right? So I'll give you the history. Uh, I have to fix the uh, eraser. Uh, I'll do it the appropriate way. Just regular water instead of coffee. My sprayer's broken, so it's inconvenient. All right, so so that's the that's the bet. Okay, I'm betting that no, 
It's all the same energy. You'll get the same energy. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say is, yeah, just pretend I did that same drawing and we'll use magnets. Okay, so in one circumstance, we're gonna use two north-facing magnets. So one of them's a spring and the other one we use magnets. But see, magnets like springs give you the right, you know, you compress the magnet a certain distance, you get the same amount of energy every time. So we know we're getting the same energy into both objects. So we'll compress a magnet and shoot them. Compress a magnet and shoot them. Same energy then. And we'll collect it the same way. And again, they're going to say that I should get twice as much energy from the thing going faster. That's what their formula says. And the reason why their formula says that is because of this stupid thing of gravity. So this is another experiment that we could do too. So we'll just throw this one in as free bonus, right? This is one so easy and so simple. And what we'll do is we'll have a, a spring and we'll compress it the same amount, you know, for the, for the experiment. And we'll shoot two things into, into the air. Okay, so we'll, we'll shoot something that weighs two, two m's, two masses worth. And then we'll do a one mass, okay. And, uh, you know, so when we do the two mass and we do the one mass, okay, their theory is, is that, you know, obviously the one mass has so much more energy because it's smaller. Well, the truth is, is the one mass will go four times higher, okay. <laughs> All right, because of how gravity works. So, I mean, it's going to look like, hey, man, that one went way higher than this one. So, way higher means it has more energy, right? So, because it went four times higher, right, four, that means it has more energy. When, no, if you understand how gravity works, um, you, you, the faster you go through the force, it's like running through the rain, the less rain that hits you. So the faster you're going, the less hits you. But then when they come back down, what do we think their energy is going to really be, right? We compress the spring a certain amount. Okay, we know the spring has a certain amount of joules in it. It can't make more joules. It can't make more energy. It can only make the spring's energy worth of energy. And it doesn't, springs don't care about how fast they expand. They can give you back a little bit at a time, or they can give it back to you really quickly. They don't care. Okay, so springs um, are uh, good. And magnets are the same way. They, they'll give it back to you in pieces if you want. So we could do this with magnets also. And we'll get the same results. Yes, it will be true. The lighter object will go four times higher. All right. And it'll, it'll be moving for uh, twice as fast. Its velocity when it leaves will be twice as fast. So it has two different little weirdnesses. It's going twice as fast and it goes four times higher. So this is why they drew this conclusion that this formula makes sense. is because they thought when they threw things into gravity, that told them how much energy it has. Because gravity affects things based on how long they're in the gravity, they thought, oh, that, that, that means it has more energy. But we know when they fall back down, okay, <laughs> this one falls from this little short distance, right? It only went this high. When it sh falls this short little distance, guess what? It's going to compress the spring just as much as the light one. So I could shoot the feather. I could take all the feather's mass, tiny little mass, and I could shoot it. And it goes really far and really fast. But it's going to come down. It's going to be the same amount of energy as I, I push this one with. There's no extra energy because it's going fast. It can't do any more work in the universe. It has no such thing as uh, <laughs> you know, one half mv squared of anything. It contains no such thing. There's no equals joules or quantity or energy or anything. There's no such thing. It has no such thing. You can never measure such a thing. It can't exist as a reality. Now, the only reason they believe this is because they did a silly clay experiment, right? So they threw things into clay. You know, they let them fall into clay is the truth with gravity. Uh, but they didn't do any clay experiments to see what happens with clay. And the trick with clay is, is that I could take the same spring, right? And I shoot things exactly with the same energy. But all I have to do is change their shape, size, um, and mass. And I can change how deep they go into the clay. So if I, like with gravity, if I move them quickly into the clay, they'll go much, much further into the clay. Because the clay doesn't get to stick to them. You know, if they go fast, it breaks all of the little hairs of the clay, so to speak. And the clay can't stick to it as well. So it goes through the clay much better, much further, the faster it's going. So the clay, you could argue, has a bias for fast things, right? 
so does your brain, <laughs> you know, so does your, your tissues. That's why certain bullets go deep, certain bullets don't, all these things. It's not because of how much energy they have. It's about how fast they're going, okay, and how big they are, and, you know, how much surface area they have. So that was the catch. They did the clay experiments in gravity, and they found that when they doubled the velocity, the, the clay was dented four times as much. So the faster thing dents the clay more. But that's, you know, smart scientific type people could understand that, oh, well, that's because clay deforms, okay, clay sticks, it does all of these things, and it's just cheating. Fast things get to go through it further than slow things. Clay isn't a spring. Clay isn't magnets. Clay isn't something that gives you a consistent um, measurement of energy. It gives you a very inconsistent, inaccurate one. So this is the only reason why this silly, idiotic, nonsensical, rubbish, garbage, nonsense formula exists is because physicists decided to let people who weren't even physicists, okay, these weren't even scientists, these were just rich people in France, okay? So some rich people in France who could afford to do experiments and write books and have libraries and have parties, they decided to do physics experiments, okay? Sort of like Tesla and the other asshole, <laughs> you know, the Tesla asshole is probably the best example, or the other stupid airplane, other guy, whatever his name, the Australian uh, loony, um, you know, they let rich people do their science for them, and it's garbage science, really. Um, they didn't hire physicists to build their rockets, by the way. They, you know, this is the f experiments they actually did, you know, and stuff like that. And they really didn't know physics very well. They didn't really study it exclusively. They, they were doing this, you know, um, Renaissance man thing, pretending they knew everything about everything. Um, and it's clearly a garbage experiment. But the truth is, for 100 and you know, 156 years, um, there weren't any physicists smart enough to say, oh shit, we can get rid of that, that's a nonsense. So they let some, they say engineers like this, exper they, engineers like this formula for some reason. Even though it gives, always gives you the wrong answer, somehow engineers like it. <laughs> yeah, uh, but anyway, it was called the living force. Let's understand that. So it was called a silly religious thing. It originally started, so for the first 56 years, it was mv squared. So that was the definition of energy. Energy equals mv squared. So it was really biased for velocity. I mean, velocity squared, and they didn't even put the half in here to cut it down a little bit. So it gave you gigantic numbers for the energy. And the faster you can make something go, the more energy you collect. So the lighter you made things, the, the more energy you made. And just understand, that's the implication of what they're saying. If I take a heavy thing and I roll it into a spring, okay, and then I, I collect, I, I, I lock the spring, how much the heavy thing, um, you know, compress the spring, and then I put a light thing, okay on that spring and now i release the spring because i did that i made energy twice as much energy so all i have to do is keep putting lighter and lighter things in the spring i, I just throw this into another spring and then i put something half as light okay one half the mass here and i make double the energy again and then i put something one half the mass over here and i double the energy again I mean, I have an ener perpetual energy-making machine. That's exactly a factual implication of this nonsense formula. That's exactly what this nonsense formula says is a reality, that I can do that. Now, they know they can't do that, right? They know that won't work. But show me somewhere where that isn't mathematically correct, that I've somehow broken the truth or cheated the facts in some way that's exactly what they're factually arguing is the case they're not saying anything other than exactly that that's all i have to do keep rolling heavy things <laughs> into springs and replacing them with lighter things and letting the spring um, push it back just keep doing that or magnets or whatever 
and I can just keep making energy all day long. Right? Alright, so there's nothing. I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's such a conclusive argument. It's so, and it's so simple uh, that the formula doesn't work. They have no example of it working. They can provide me no experiment showing where momentum gets the wrong answer and that formula gets the right answer. They won't show you a single experiment ever where that works, where they collected the joules of energy. They put a generator on it. You know, they did, you know, they pulled the rope with it. They did something to do work and they proved they actually got the work out. They got 200, they got 500 joules of energy out of the lighter object moving faster. They'll never show it because it can't happen. It doesn't happen. It's absolute nonsense. It has zero value as a definition of the truth. No part of it is correct. The half is wrong. The squared is wrong. The only thing right is the MV. The rest of it is absolute nonsense. You just broke what worked. And they broke it, like I said, it was broken by Newton's worst enemy. So let's just understand that context. The guy who stole Newton's calculus, the guy whose whole reputation depended on discrediting Newton. That's who invented this garbage. And it's garbage. <laughs> it's so stupid. And it's all just because of how gravity works. Gravity gives different things. Gravity affects things. Although they move the same velocity, Gravity imposes a lot more force on the heavy thing than it imposes on the light thing. The light thing collects a lot less energy from gravity than the heavy thing collects from gravity. And you can see it when the things hit the ground. I put two different weights uh, at the same height in gravity and you'll see that, oh yeah, one of them makes a much bigger dent than the other one. Because the truth is one of them collected more energy. So because gravity is disproportionate, because gravity biases to velocity, um, they broke all of physics. They assumed that everything worked that way. When, no, gravity works that way. Springs don't work that way. Magnets don't work that way. Brick walls don't work that way. Nothing else, cars don't work that way. Nothing else works that way. All right. So now for the useless part. Um, since he's going to mention this asshole in the comments, I might as well do him first. So he's such a weasel. <laughs> you know, this, this asshole, this veggie tail, tate guy or whatever, vegetail, or I don't know what the hell he is. Um, veggie. Anyway, now he must misunderstood again. I didn't misunderstand anything. Okay, so this is just more horseshit. You're defending some idiotic notion that you can conserve momentum. And let's understand, when anybody says conserve momentum, they don't mean, oh, you lost a whole bunch of heat. Oh, you made a whole lot of sounds. Oh, you made sparks. That's not what the people mean. When they say conserve momentum, they mean they transfer the momentum. Nobody talks about heat as being momentum. No one, ever. <laughs> okay, so that's just absolute crap. But again, that's not everybody's fault that, that uh, a lot of the vocabulary in science is broken. Um, clearly the argument being made that even when I do this experiment with the springs, it will be conceded that 2% of the energy might get lost. That in the experiment, in compressing the spring, in friction on the track that the ball rolls on, again, a little bit of friction and, and a little bit of heat on the spring, there might be 2% losses. We're looking for 500%. <laughs> you know, we're looking for... Um, a doubling of a change in its in its energy, so that two percent is going to be quite meaningless. But we'll accept that there will be some losses, but they're going to be so minor it can't matter. Uh, again, that's not the argument these people are defending. These people are defending the argument that you know you can conserve the momentum, that is, you can completely transfer it from one object to another object, and still make heat. It's idiotic. All right. <clears throat> um, let's see. <clears throat> now I misunderstood again and thought I was saying the first train will bounce back completely. That's what you said. So see, he, he played a semantics game. Okay, I'll, I'm using thought experiments and I said, well, imagine the train, you know, that weighs three tons and is going one mile an hour, hits a train that's, go, you know, 
two and weighs, you know, weighs two tons. Well, it's the other way around, the light thing hitting the heavy thing. And he made the true argument that, well, you really can't do those transfers by just banging things into each other because the light thing won't be able to stick to the heavy thing. It'll bounce off. And so it'll only impart part of its energy because it'll only stick for a very short period of time. So it only gives a little bit of its energy to the heavy thing, and then the rest of the energy goes in terms of a reflection. Now, yeah, of course, that's the truth, but that's not really the thought experiment. The thought experiment is a true transfer. So then I changed the thought experiment and said, okay, just imagine I run the heavy thing into a spring, I compress the spring, and now I replace it with a light thing, and I shoot the light thing. Now I have successfully transferred the energy. So we don't have any arguments about, you know, your practical reality crap. So then I just did the same thing to him. So after he did that to me, I did the same thing to him. I said, no, it won't completely bounce back. And he's complaining. So, so he forces me to be explicitly true. And then when I, expl- I, I force him to be explicitly true or accurate, he doesn't like it. I mean, what a frickin' duplicitous hypocrite. All right. So he says, no, it will bounce back at two-thirds miles per hour back. And the second train will go pushed forward by three quarters mile per hour so you can even you know the grammar's pretty poor there too right the second train will go pushed will go pushed (laughs) yeah sorry Uh, i can't believe i have to go through such excruciating detail to avoid being misread by him so again he did exactly that to me he said oh we're not going to accept the transfer okay because technically you can't do it okay technically you can't bang uh Things that don't have exactly the same mass, you can't transfer the energy without a gimmick, okay? Because they'll always cause one of them to reflect too quickly or one of them to reflect backwards, like he said. So you'll either cause something to leave too fast and then it can't, you can't hit it anymore, or it'll cause the opposite effect where you, you hit it but you're bounced away before you could push all your energy into it. You'll get the reflection. So, um, so, but that doesn't change the argument. The argument is about whether, you know, something going one mile an hour that weighs twice as much, something going two miles, something going one mile an hour that weighs two V, you know, something one M going two V has more or less energy than something with uh, one V and two M. Or, yeah, well, you know, just the inverse. That's the argument. You're defending the idea that one of them has twice as much energy as the other. And it's a silly idea. It's insanely almost silly. As a physics notion, it should, for a physicist, it should be in the category of an insane notion. All right, afterwards, well, <laughs> insisting momentum equals energy, yeah, it does. And again, they haven't shown me a single video where momentum doesn't work. They haven't shown me a single experiment demonstrating where momentum gets the wrong answer, where momentum doesn't describe actual energy, okay? Actual ability to move things in the universe. All right, he said more, he said more than once. Yeah, exactly. This is an absolute fact and you can't refute it. That's right, there's not a single experiment I know of. This doesn't exist, I'm sorry. It doesn't exist, your magical create energy f- Um, experiment doesn't exist and every single event I've ever seen in my life verifies momentum works make something twice as heavy and have it sit on a chair and the chair breaks it always works (sighs) shit okay Uh, like a televangelist or a presuppositionalist so so again sin there's no there's you attacking Newton, okay? You don't think Newton was sensible. He viewed the universe as having things with mass and velocity. You don't think that's the way the universe should be viewed. You think velocity should be twice, no, squared in terms of our vision. We should see velocity as the biggest, hugest, most important thing in the world, and we should see mass as some little irrelevant little winky dink. Okay. If you actually look at the comment thread, yeah, please do. Uh, he doesn't give any attempt at why this is the case. I gave, I've gave, i given every drawing of it, every example of it I can possibly say. Anything else means you create free energy by just banging heavy things into light things. That's all I have to do. I just keep banging heavy things into light things and I'll keep making energy for free. I'll get more energy out than I put in. That's what your formula overtly says. Okay. <laughs> 
I at least gave some reasoning. What reasoning? Again, there's, you gave me no reasoning to explain how you can have the momentum is perfectly transferred. All right, so even we go back to the physics girl video. So we have a one ton train moving five miles, let's say 10 miles an hour. And we couple it to another one ton train. Now we have two tons going five miles an hour. All of the momentum was transferred in, in the experiment, right? You can't have the two trains going five miles an hour if you didn't transfer every single bit of the energy, right, retard? So you went from 10 miles an hour and one ton to two tons and five miles an hour. Is there any possibility that you lost energy somewhere for that, that outcome to happen? You do know that outcome can't possibly exist as an outcome if you lost any energy to heat, sound, noise, coupling, anything. If you lost any energy anywhere to the surrounding environment, you can't possibly be going five miles an hour. It's physically impossible, you idiot. And you're defending it. Oh no, there was a whole bunch of losses. We lost all kinds of energy all over the place. Because their formula says the single train, the single one ton train going 10 miles an hour has twice as much energy as a two ton train going five miles an hour. Their formula says so. Okay, reality doesn't say so. No reality says so. No experiment says so. You're just so fucking wrong. <laughs> just, it's just so amazing that you're, you people would defend something so freaking ludicrous. All right. Um, so he doesn't even attempt at why this is the case. So I obviously I have attempted to explain to you that your formula means you make energy. Okay, by, by the simple process of decoupling, <laughs> you know, by the simple process of banging the two-ton train into a spring, you end up with the, a consequence where you've created energy. Just a fact. All right, I'll take a little break and be back. Yeah, should be back. All right, so let's uh, continue the comment anyway. <laughs> Try to get over this over with. Um, is, so he says, also, he went on to childish insults, saying, I believe in magic energy. So, look, if you go back to the comments, you'll see plenty of insults by him. Nobody could be as dumb as you, whatever. This is... Blah, blah, blah. So, just gratuitous nonsense. So, just absolute bullshit. So, saying, I believe in magic energy. He says that's not an argument. That's the consequence of the formula. There's no way to escape the consequences of the formula. The formula says, I take equal springs, compress them... Put light object, put heavy object, light object has twice as much energy. That's what your formula says. Okay, it's not my fault, it's stupid. Okay, it's not your fault that you have to defend physics, you know, millions of physicists who are too stupid to see something so obviously wrong. Something that doesn't, obviously doesn't work. It's not my fault. Okay, it's not my fault, you're stupid, you're lazy. You don't give the foundational concepts. You give them short shrift. You just believe what they say. They tell you neutrino, you believe in it. They tell you superposition, you believe in it. They tell you entanglement, you believe in it. Okay? You're just dupes. Not my fault. You're dupey. Okay? <laughs> dupey. <laughs> yeah. You have a high dupitude. Yeah. That's a, that's a good one. How does anyone think <laughs> he has a shred of integrity? So I'm willing to put money behind it. I'm willing to pay somebody we can agree on to do the experiment. I'm willing in every way to prove myself or the theory, my theory against your theory. What I don't see from you is any, any ability to do that at all. Any willingness to participate in any kind of real physics or real science to find the truth. It seems to me you don't want the truth. You just want to dogmatically tell people what they must believe or you'll insult them. And that's all that took place here. You just insulted me for not believing in your religion. The religion of your one-half mv squared, where, again, it doesn't make any sense. It's not a derived formula. Let's understand, they have now contrived in a way to make it make sense mathematically. But when it was invented, there was no deriving the equation. It wasn't derived from anything but a misunderstanding of how gravity works. They think how far you travel in the gravity means uh, you have more energy. So light things go higher in gravity because they have more energy, right? 
I have an elephant sit on a teeter-totter, you know. I have the elephant sit on it. If I put a light thing on it, I make more energy than if I put a heavy thing on it. They believe that. They believed that. Is that my fault that they're stupid? <laughs> so, anyway, I don't think there's any reason to read these. Um... Yeah, so yeah, I think it's because it was too long. I wanted to copy paste the entire thread, but now I figure it, it was not really necessary. So he, he is defending his argument in the thread, which is he's arguing that I can perfectly transfer all the momentum, like in Physics Girl's video. So I take a, a one-ton train going 10 miles an hour, I connect it to another train, and they both go off at 5 miles an hour. And they now weigh two tons. And the fact is, I lost half the energy. No, the fact is you didn't. <laughs> yeah, the fact is now you have two, technically, two trains going five miles an hour. Which means you, when you crash them into a wall or something, the first train will crash into it and the second train will crash into it, making more and more damage. Certainly making the initial energy's worth of damage. The light train going 10 miles an hour, the heavy train going 5 miles an hour. They have the same momentum. They have the same energy. You're just really, really stupid. And you won't admit it. <laughs> so, I mean, just say, okay, this asshole, whoever the fuck you are, say it somewhere. I mean, I haven't blocked you, I don't think. Uh, that you think you want to bet on the experiment. It's such a sure thing you're going to win. Okay? You're going to compress the spring twice as much merely by putting a light object on the spring. Okay? That's your theory. I'm saying your theory is absolute rubbish and you're going to lose bad, but, you know, save your money. But either do one or the other. Either concede you're wrong, okay, or, in a sense, pay up. Okay. So this is just sort of an updater. It's sort of a, a milestone or just a, a moment for commemoration. This is the moment when DAF science hits a sort of a new low in terms of his rhetoric. Okay, so, so he's taking this as a new low, and yet his argument is so feeble and empty. You're like, what, you, what the fuck are you talking about? I have made mistakes in the past that, yes, somebody could grab a hold of and say, okay, that's all I'm going to argue but in no way does he counter argue. He doesn't show the experiment where you get twice as much energy. Yeah, light things make more energy. Just keep putting light things on springs and you'll make more and more energy. Just make it lighter and lighter so it goes faster and faster and the faster you make it go, the more energy you're making. That's their theory. That's the direct, absolutely direct implication of their kinetic energy formula. It has a huge bias for velocity. It just, and it couldn't care less about mass. One half the mass, right? <laughs> half the mass, velocity squared. It's not like two velocity, right? That would make some sense. It's the velocity squared. Um, so if you're not following this channel, Daft Science, uh, then some of this might make sense, some of it might not, but... I, I don't know who else is watching your videos Farley. <laughs> Jeez, it's just it's pathetic. So let's just understand this character. This is a character who has taken, you know, he puts photos of my house as his, as his channel icon, right, uh, where I live, uses the name of the other person who's living in my house, takes the name of my sisters and my dead parents. So he takes their, my dead parents, he's taking their name and using it to make sock accounts. So this is the kind of deplorable, sick, horrible, evil, nasty, shitty human being that this is. So just as he wants to make a, you know, uh, so there's context, you know, for his viewers, that's the context for me. And if I see you commenting on his videos, then I'm going to know you're an asshole, okay? So yes, you shouldn't watch his videos. He's an asshole. He's a troll, and that's all he is, okay? He can't make a real argument. I'm just playing this just to prove he can't make an argument, Okay, so he says I've committed some some stupidity that's so glaring, right, that it makes all my other act mistakes huge. It's you know tiny by comparison, and yet he'll provide not a single piece of evidence how I'm wrong, not a shred of evidence. Yeah, because you have to understand the context. But this guy here is basically saying, 
So he read this sentence on camera. The sentence is, friction doesn't take away momentum. And then... Right. So it's the stupidest thing you could possibly say. And as, as I stated, right, I've never really heard a stupider scientifically phrased statement than I could have friction and not lose momentum. Of course, I have to lose my momentum. If I make if I have friction with a surface, I can't have the same momentum unless I have a motor that's making my momentum unless I have some external source. So if I have a certain momentum and that's all I have, I don't have a you know, a helicopter blade spinning. I don't have a, you know, I have no source of propulsion. I'm just going based on my momentum. And I have friction with a the surface. There's no possible way I can retain my momentum. Anybody who thinks you can is, is if there was insanity in terms of a physics perception, you would be physics insane. He spends like five and a half minutes calling this person a moron. Without and then, and then he, he, I read his entire comment, and yes, I he called him. I called him a moron because he's implying I am one. Concluded it with with, and I'm not even going to read the rest of the sentence. I I didn't say that. Okay, I mean I didn't say I wouldn't read the rest of the sentence in the sense of I'm not going to re read it. Let's just focus on those words alone. That first sentence. Okay, I of course did read his entire comment. Um, even though the rest, or the rest of the paragraph, because the rest of the paragraph actually clarifies this point. Friction. Well, I read the entire thing, so just more nonsense, right? This isn't an argument that could make any sense. To, I read the entire comment. It doesn't take away momentum. Okay, I don't know. Maybe you've heard of something called the conservation of momentum. <laughs> right, and when they say the momentum was conserved, they mean that the momentum was transferred successfully. So physics girl said the momentum was conserved, right? So she was arguing that. We have the same exact, you know, all of the momentum this had, the 500 joules of momentum or whatever it was, it went into this thing, blah, 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 blah. But we lost half the energy. How can you conserve the momentum and lose energy? My argument is that those are impossible things to have happen. You can't possibly conserve the momentum, that is, transfer the momentum and lose energy. It's not physically, mechanically, or logically possible. You can't ever show me an example of it working. You can't ever show me how you have two things, how you transferred all of the momentum and lost energy. You won't be able to show me any of the energy losses. It's impossible because it can't happen. You have to lose momentum to the process of the transfer. If the transfer created heat, then the other train can't go five miles an hour. It has to go four point something. It can't go five. Now, I hesitate to even say conservation momentum. I mean, because he, first of all, let's just make this very clear. He denies the conservation momentum. He so there's absolutely no quotes, no anything, no evidence that ever denied the conservation of momentum. Complete lie. Denies conservation of energy. Complete lie. I made the one qualification for the fact that energy conservation in the case of gravity uh, might be a stupid argument to make because frankly gravity works and it works because somehow less energy comes out of material objects than goes into them and that's why we're stuck on the surface of the earth is because more energy is hitting us from space than is hitting us from the earth's surface and that's why we fall into the earth and he literally, I mean, he literally says that in his physics in his physics the tons that tip and tap at right angles uh, so let's understand. You people believe in, uh, you know, positrons and and uh, neutrinos. Yeah. So is that is is that how we'll just do these arguments? We'll just make fun of words, and therefore we win the argument. So if I can make more fun of your Taui virtutani, your Taui virtutanis. You know, that make magnetism, you know, it's a little virtutani and it goes to the object and, you know, it, it wets its pants. And if it wets its pants, the, the other object runs away. But if it doesn't wet its pants, then it moves towards it and tries to kiss it. I mean, you have no explanation for any real physical events in the universe, none whatsoever. And all you can do is make fun of words. And let's understand all these ton words are their invention. So if you just try to make something fit into their mold of uh, verbiage, they make fun of it. 
yet they won't make fun of their own silly verbiage. Virtual twine. And maybe they skip and scap and flip and flap too. They do not lose speed and they do not lose momentum. Uh, <clears throat> Mass when so clearly it's right on the video, right on the front page of my website, the gravity video. It's clearly stating that the whole reason why gravity is created is because the force slows down while it's pushing matter. While it's pushing matter, it's not going the speed of uh, light. That's the whole argument, right? It's occupied pushing the matter. The matter is heavy. Once it gets rid of the piece of matter in front of it, then it goes back to going the speed of light. But while it's pushing the matter, it's not going the speed of light. Therefore, it's losing momentum as a force. So those, that argument's already been made months and months and months ago. That's the physics I'm defending. Um, and he wishes to just keep quote mining from 10 years ago. They hit an object and impart motion upon it. So in other words, a baton hits an object, causes the other the object to start moving, even a small amount. The baton bounces off and it continues going the exact <clears throat> So again, that was never the theory that it just, you know, it gives motion and bounces off. And the ar argument is is that there's energy in the rest of the universe and the rest of the in your universe hits things and the both things reflect. And when two things reflect, that's almost the same thing as two things just missing each other. Same outcome is the argument. So again, he can't he can't be fair to an argument to save his life. And, you know, so I mean, again, this is a criticism I shouldn't even waste time on because it is so pathetic. It's, you know, it's so toothless, you know, and all it is is, you know, slander, lies, nonsense. At same speed. Okay, but it has not lost any mass. It just keeps going the same speed. Nothing can lose mass, let's say. Okay, so... Mass is electrons and protons. How do you lose those? So you might believe that you can lose mass somehow. Uh, I don't. I don't believe you can destroy an electron. I don't believe you can destroy a, a proton. You believe that. That's your fable, for which you have no evidence you could show anybody. You just have stories from accelerator people telling you that's what they did. You really don't have any. You can't show me. But then he also denies relativity. So there's an absolute... Well, of course I deny any silly notion that there isn't some call, thing called real velocity. Like, no matter what the scenario is, two things are interacting. The fact is they both contain real velocities. And the only velocities we're going to be able to see are the ones that are in conflict with each other, that are going in opposite directions. And that's all we'll see. And it doesn't matter which one has the velocity the impact will take place uh, regardless. We can't tell the difference. But to believe that neither one of them has the difference in it, neither one has difference, <laughs> that would be silly. Yeah, so I think it's silly to think the universe isn't made out of momentum, because it is. And things travel because they have real momentum. And all we can see is when two things have different momentums. When they have the same momentum, they never hit each other. <laughs> yeah. They can only hit each other when they have different momentums. And we just see the difference. Yes, so it's relative, but it doesn't, relativity doesn't mean there's no absolute reality. If I do the, the stupid twin thing, and I send a twin one way and the other twin stays, one of the twins will be going faster, and one of them won't be. Truth. And if I make it so they're both going the same speed, then they'll be the same age. The reference frame in this universe. That is mathematically incongruent. So there's no mathematics that demonstrates there's no absolute reality. So they've never proven any math to show that nothing could be standing absolutely still in the universe. And that the fastest thing is still going the speed of light relative to it. They've never, <laughs> there's no equation, there's no... Uh, mathematical truth that has ever established that the universe has an infinite number of frames in it. And all I have to do is put frames inside of frames and tie of frames and I can make things go, you know, a million times the speed of light. Uh, no, you can't do any of that frame crap. So it's again, it's just another concept that has paradoxically broken the whole frame universe thing. It has paradoxical problems because I, if theoretically I could put a frame inside of a frame inside of a frame and theoretically, the objects in those frames would have to go faster than the speed of light. 
Um, anybody who understands how math works knows that, that isn't possible. There's no way to make that work. So again, that's just the promise of some proof that we'll never see. Um, and I can do the math. I don't know. The people watching him can't. And so that's why they listen to him. So we know you can't do math because you think um, one half mv squared can possibly make sense. You think you could possibly apply it to any circumstance in the universe and make sense of it. And I'm overtly telling you, anywhere you ever use it, you're going to get a wrong answer. Because it's a stupid formula. It's stupid. It's just completely made up and it's wrong. It's just religious bullshit thrown into the middle of physics. Right into the middle of it. And they, they take his word on all this nonsense. That he's so, again, you don't have to take my word on anything. Like I said, we, let's finance the experiment. I'm sure some of my viewers would love to make some extra money, right? So your money, you get to keep, right? So if we, have, if we can get them to bet more than you know, two grand, let's say, for me to do the experiment, I'll devote that money to having the experiment done. And any of the rest of you who wish to bet... You know, that's your money. So if we can find these people, these, these people who want to defend real physics, okay, <laughs> uh, conventional physics, and they think it's a sure money maker for them, uh, let's do it. Okay, my viewers would love to double their money. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to double their money by taking it from you, an imbecile. <laughs> yeah, but we're not going to get any pledges. We're not going to get anybody who's going to sit there and try to say, Oh, yeah, Gary, you're wrong. It doesn't happen that way. No, it's exactly the way it happens. You know, because something goes four times higher in gravity does not mean it has four times the energy because it's lighter. <laughs> Duh! If it's light, it can't come back down and create more energy. You don't even understand the physics, right? It goes four times higher. It has four times the energy. No, because when it hits the ground, it's going to have exactly the same amount of energy as the heavy thing that went much lower. Exactly the same amount of energy. You'll, you know, squish a duck just as much. <laughs> no matter what we use to measure the energy, it'll be exactly the same amount of energy. Use forth. Um, it becomes a part of the total momentum in that system, yeah. So, by the way, if you're walking on planet Earth, you're actually imperceptibly moving the planet in the opposite direction. Okay. Well, the, 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 this is another one of these arguments one could make. That when you're on the surface, though, that's even Newton said, you know, once you go past the surface line, all the rules sort of change. And when you're, Zach, when you're on exactly the surface, <laughs> okay, yeah, it gets a little bit complicated to say whether you're really feeling gravity or whether you're just feeling the Earth pushing back. That you actually have to push into the Earth before you'll even feel the Earth push back. Hey, that's Newton's law. If he ever read Newton's laws, he doesn't. So, so if he, you ever read Newton's laws, you know that Newton didn't say anything about things past the, you know, going inside the Earth. He was quite certain the same rules didn't apply. Understand that a reaction has an equal and opposite reaction. So again, that's what I said. Okay, the guy in the comments said a reaction force. So, do you believe there's a reaction force? See, I said it was perfectly agreeable to say, you know, every action has a, an opposite reaction because you either do successfully push something or you don't. If you successfully push it, there's no opposite anything except the fact that you move something, right? So that's the obvious one. And it's only when you don't successfully push something that you get the reflective energy, the re energy reflected back at you. So I gave examples of that already. You know, you push on a brick wall, you don't successfully act on the brick wall. <laughs> You unsuccessfully act on it. And that's when you have a reaction. But there's no reaction when you successfully move it. You transfer your energy then. There's no opposite force. You start moving with the cart you're pushing. If I'm pushing a cart and I'm successfully pushing it, what's the opposite reaction? I'm not, there's no opposite reaction. I'm successfully transferring my energy. Um, another way to think of it is if you're in a boat, there's no way that if, if unless you're you know pushing water with a, a paddle or you're you know moving on pushing on. So I don't even know what this is an analogy to, but it's my argument that we're in a universe full of energy, like all those photons we see, and then there's all those photons we don't see, and then there's the gravity and the magnetism. They're all stuff that's exactly the same as the photons, except they're not at a frequency. But it's the same momentum. There's a ton of momentum in the universe, a ton of it, you know, moving the speed of light, and it's real momentum, just like photons are real momentum. And we're constantly being uh, maneuvered by that momentum. We don't go anywhere. 
the momentum is imposed on us. Something outside of the system. There's no way you can make the boat move. You could rock back and forth and make the boat sort of move back and forth. Um, well, again, we do know, though, that in space we can throw a wrench and it keeps going. And there's a reason why it keeps going. And it's also true that we know that electrons and protons don't keep going. No electrons hit us from the sun. No electrons hit us from, you know, the, the, all, the, all the galaxies in space. They're not sending any electrons to us or any protons to us. They are sending helium nucleuses to us, though. So, clearly, um, atomic nuclei can keep going. They have a little motor, and they just go in the boat. Once you, once you, once you engage their motor, they keep, they keep moving through space. But assuming that there, there's no friction with the water, you're never going to be able to make the boat. You're never going to be able to influence the motion of the boat. So, so clearly we know that's not true. I'm just saying that clearly we know uh, wrenches can be stationary or wrenches can just keep going through space forever, theoretically. Real world, you have to do, you know, contend with things like wind and water isn't totally frictionless. Right, wind, <laughs> you might get blown by a force. So again, the argument is, is that, yes, we're all controlled by force on the subatomic level. That is, the electrons and protons just go where the force tells them. Whatever the force balance is, that's where they go. So they're just being completely manipulated by the force. But the truth is, is when you put them in a nucleus, okay, electrons and protons, you can create arrangements where more energy ends up pushing on one side than the other side. And so they'll just keep pushing into a direction. They'll just keep vibrating in one direction. But that's the real world we're talking about, a physical, physics, hypothetical idealization. Okay, so... Uh, so that's a decisive argument in, in his sense. He thinks he's now decisively demonstrated how I'm wrong about something. With that crap analogy. Mm-hmm. Not even close. Whatever, I mean... I, I don't even, I mean, this should be obvious. I mean, I shouldn't, this shouldn't be that complicated. It becomes a part of the total momentum of the system. It's possibly things... All right, so again, they keep using this total thing of the system thing. Again, I can't have a train that's going 10, 10 miles an hour and weighs one ton. I connect it to another train. So now I have two trains that weigh two tons going five miles an hour. They can't go five miles an hour if I lost energy, any energy at all. If I lose any energy at all, any 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 significant amount of energy, I mean, any energy at all, it can't be five miles an hour. It has to be four point something. Can't be. It's not possible to completely uh, exchange the momentum and then argue there was a bunch of losses. More complicated than you want. I don't know what that means. A closed system can involve two pieces or millions. It doesn't change the basic principles. Energy can be added to a system or completely lost. Um, kinetic energy, yes. So, so again, they're, they're making up this thing that somehow energy, you can lose energy. And, and to what? It has to go somewhere. If you conserve all of the momentum, all of the momentum is transferred, you can't possibly lose energy to something else. You, you can't... You know, I mean, it's just kind of obvious, right? I mean, if I have a certain amount of pushing force and, you know, a certain amount of compressed spring, and so first I decide to, you know, pinch somebody with it, you know, <laughs> give them a little willy, right? Or whatever. I, I decide to move my cup with the compressed spring. And then now, but the spring has still got some compression. And then I try to give all of the compression to some, I can't give it to something else now. I already wasted some of it. I can't lose the energy to the system, the environment, and then claim I transferred all the momentum. 100% of the momentum was transferred, yet I lost half the energy. That's ludicrous. <laughs> it's just too stupid. I can't believe. I can't believe these people. And again, I've made it so clear what the experiment would be. And I'm not seeing them saying, yes, let's do the experiment. Let's do the experiment. Let's prove it. Um, yeah, and it can also be radiated through heat, but then, well, okay, so that's true. Momentum can't, uh, okay, I have no idea. So, so momentum can't be, so again, this is so hilarious. Momentum is real energy, 
If you lose it, you just you you move it into the system, you convert it into heat, then it's it's not momentum in the object anymore. You lost it. You can't give your momentum to something else the same amount of momentum if you lost it somewhere. I mean, if the nickel falls out of your pocket, it's not in your pocket anymore. You can't buy anything with it. Like, like I'm sure this is responding to something he said where he denied conservation moment momentum. So there's no denial of conservation of momentum. I'm defending conservation of momentum. I'm defending conservation of energy. You're the one saying that all I have to do is put light things on compressed springs and I can make more energy. If I put a heavy thing on, I'll only get 250 joules. If I put a light thing on, I'll get 500 joules. That's your theory. I can make the spring more energetic just by putting light things on it. It's an idiotic theory. But, you know, of course, the viewers of his channel aren't going to know that. They, they're not going to take the time to go back and watch this video that this is responding to. Yeah, the viewers are all assholes, frankly. I don't even know who's viewing these videos. I don't know, you know, do any of you people have brain cells? Do you, do you understand anything? Do you give a shit about anything? Because all I get is crappy, stupid, irrelevant. Oh, who, 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 who made photons? You know, or some kind of, you know, just this, this is, they can't stay on the subject to save their life. What about quantum computer? I got one of those comments. It's like, you know, I mean, I'll answer it someday. I mean, I have already answered it, but I mean, I'll make a video just about that subject and just point out how, well, if you think random number generation is somehow useful, uh, they won't use a quantum computer to do anything constructive because it doesn't work. It's really good at getting wrong answers. If you want the absolute worst answer to a question, ask a quantum computer because it's really good at giving you erroneous nonsense as an answer. Because notice how he takes away the context, so he deletes the comment, but before... So let's understand, it's an email I was sent, okay? So I didn't delete it, I just read it and pointed out how it's shit. So I have invited people who are blocked. If you have some great argument to make, then email it to me, and I will read it if it's not complete crap, you know, about how, you know... <laughs> you know, I don't know how crooked my toenails are or something. I mean, if you can stay on the subject a little bit, I will read it. Um, you know, because I'm not afraid of your arguments. I'm just, I don't, I don't have any obligation to waste my time defending myself against liars. So if you can't tell the truth and you're just going to, you know, string a bunch of lies together that I have to explain why you're full of shit and that didn't happen and that didn't happen and I didn't say that and I didn't. That's a waste of everyone's time, especially my valuable time. So if that's all you can do, yeah, you're going to get blocked. If you have to premise your argument with lies, fuck you. So if you can't just make your physics argument, you'll get blocked. And then if you're blocked and you still think you have some great point to make, then email it to me. Okay, and I'll give it a fair shot and I'll explain why you're still full of shit. And so Jerry just keeps emailing me horse shit. And so I read it and show how, yeah, look how stupid this fucker is. I mean, really, friction doesn't take away momentum. The stupidest thing you could say, I mean, it couldn't be more anti every single thing on earth says that's a pile of shit. That's just nonsense. No experiment in the history of mankind proved that right. He deletes it and blocks this guy. He copies and pastes the comment into a, a text document and then uses that to ridicule him. Okay. Yeah, I did that just to preserve. I mean, I didn't mean to uh, show his email address. I mean, it did show up in there, but who cares? Uh, but yeah, that's all. Just trying to be fair. Don't, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, but he devoids it from the context. So if we actually know what video this is commenting on, because I don't watch all his videos, I don't read all his stupid comments. I... Right, so he's somehow is going to say, and context is important. So he just complained how context is important, and then he says, I don't watch the guy's videos, so I don't know the context. So, yeah, I've made a whole bunch of videos on the subject of this momentum thing, and I'm getting a whole bunch of grief from a whole bunch of idiots. And uh, I'm arguing that, you know, if you people had any integrity at all, you'd show up here and say, I'm willing to invest in the physics I'm banging over, the Bible I'm, I'm banging over other people's heads with. So if you believe in your fucking Bible, demonstrate it. I, I, not the stupid comments. I don't watch all the stupid videos with the comments responding to a stupid crap. So I don't know. So you don't really know. And so you, you're, you're, 
you, you talk all time low draft science, perhaps. And then you, you said this is the somehow the most egregious crime I have committed. And um, that's the best you can do is I don't know. It's pretty lame. But I'm sure that it's responding to something he said that was factually untrue. It doesn't matter, right? I mean, he's, he, he qualified his statement quite clearly. He started off with the premise, friction doesn't take away any momentum. I mean, what possible scenario could you imagine where you can have friction and not lose momentum? How is that possible? Again, without some kind of constant source of, of, of momentum, something to, to re-accelerate you. How could you possibly maintain your momentum and have friction? It's just not possible. So that, this is just hopefully you under, like like I, he does this all the time. This is nothing new. But the degree to which he denies basic reality is so. Again, I've denied basic reality by claiming friction always takes away your momentum. So unless you have some constant source of energy. Um, the momentum you've already acquired, velocity, not acceleration. So you only have acceler you only have your velocity, your momentum based on your movement of your mass, and that's it. You don't have a motor, you don't have any s new source of energy. You just have the energy of your momentum, and you're claiming that you can have friction with something, you can bang into something, you can, in some way, I interact with something in the universe, and it won't take a momentum away. There just couldn't be a stupider physics statement ever made. It's really, really stupid. He's at an all-time low for the entire, probably the 10 years that he's been on here. All right, so that's, that's his statement, right? This is the all-time low is me rejecting the idea that friction doesn't require you to service it with your momentum, that you don't lose momentum when you encounter friction. So that's an all-time low me denying that that ever happens. <laughs> I mean, God, this was like, I couldn't have an easier victory, could I? I mean, could I win any easier and bigger? I mean, I mean, all I had to do was show up at the starting line because all these retards run the wrong way. They step on their own shoelaces. They tie their shoelaces together and fall down. I mean, not one of these guys got a foot off the starting line. I mean, I won this contest so fucking easily. I remember when you denied that it was possible, okay, just possible, to throw a baseball out of a moving train. Now, everybody would know that I would never have said that, right? Ever. Ever, ever, ever. So, I mean, that's just way too stupid. Even that was, I mean, I don't know, maybe, but he corrected himself on that at least. So, more horse shit. Okay, so who knows what the context of that is. Uh, it might have had something to do with whether the ball travels a curved path. It might have had something to do with some kind of idea of the the total momentum. And, um, you know, I said it the wrong way. Um, but we know I certainly understand uh, ever since I've been talking about physics that you can throw baseballs off of trains. This is a new, and then, and then I think this is the same guy. He says, no, that first statement actually is true. You complete idiot. It's you who, uh, that's what he said. Uh, right. So the idiot was defending the silliest statement that could be made by a physicist, right? That you don't lose momentum to friction. So you can have as much friction, doesn't matter, you still go just as fast. The energy absorbed by the friction isn't your energy. It's not a problem. You don't have to worry about it. Your momentum is conserved. You saved it all, even though you lost it all. You can drop nickels on the ground and you still have the same number of nickels in your pocket. It's too silly. I have to concur. If you doesn't even cover the most basic physics, momentum is transferred to the surface. Yeah, that's basically true. Now, so if it's basically true, right? So the momentum is transferred to the surface. He just said, right? That's not what the the thing I was arguing says. The the thing I was arguing just said the momentum isn't bothered by friction. You don't lose momentum to friction, so it doesn't get transferred to the surface. That's what he just said. That's what we're arguing, idiot. So he doesn't, he can't even understand that he's on, on my side now. Dab Science uh, also dig himself even deeper into his hole. Um, you know, putting his foot in his mouth again. So he says, 
So what? So unless I understand, nobody has taken me up on any challenge. So I, I'm offering two thousand dollars for somebody just to play a seventeen minute video, not a single taker. I'm offering you free money essentially. Okay, any amount you want to challenge me to on this experiment, we'll do the experiment, and uh, you know, yeah, we'll have to agree on some outsider doing it. So we'll agree on that, and um, you know. I don't see you pledging. I don't see any pledges anywhere for how much money you wish to bet. One ton train going two miles an hour hits a two ton train, causes it to go one mile an hour, 100% of the momentum is transferred to the other train. Not true. I mean, only no. So, so he keeps saying no, and that's the thought experiment, though. All right, so I, I've changed the thought experiment a little bit from Physics Girl, so let's just go back to hers. So you're saying that we can transfer the momentum 100%. That's what she conceded. So you had five tons going two miles an hour. Now you have ten. T now, now you have okay. Let's, let's let's make it one ton going five ten miles an hour. Now you have two tons going five miles an hour. One hundred percent of the momentum has been transferred. The MV numbers are the same for those two things. They have one hundred percent transferred the momentum. And you say no, you lost half the energy. No, it's like if if if, if it, it, no, it would cause the other train to move. The other train would bounce, or whatever. I mean, and he doesn't understand the difference between elastic and inelastic collision. I do understand the difference, and that's why I remodeled the experiment to say, well, let's just bang the heavy train into a spring. However much it compresses it, that'll tell us how much energy it has, right? And now let's just put the other a lighter train on that same spring, and let's see how fast it goes. And the argument will be it'll go twice as fast. If it's half, if it weighs half as much, it'll go twice as fast. Exactly the same momentum. You'll say it gained a whole bunch of energy, though. The lighter train has got more energy than the heavy train. The heavy train goes in, compresses the spring. Uh, the light train, we put where the compressed spring was and release it. And somehow, magically, we gain twice as much energy. That's your theory, and it's absolute childish mush. So your reply has nothing to do with the point I was clarifying, but in case you want another correction, the one ton train will bounce backwards. So no, not 100% of the momentum will ever be transferred. That's, that's true. The premise is a false premise. It's only in an inelastic collision that you have a loss of kinetic energy, but not a loss of momentum. And it doesn't happen, though, right? Half the energy is not lost, so it's just absolute nonsense. It's apt. You can't have a completely successful transfer of all of the momentum and say, but we lost half the energy. What? It's ludicrous. Okay, that's where the case where the trains stick to each other. Now, in the real world, you can have a, a mix between an elastic and an inelastic collision. In the real world, you can just use a spring or a magnet or some other device to collect the energy as potential. And as long as you use a device that doesn't have a bias for things that go fast, you'll get the right answer. But if you use something like gravity that has a huge bias for things going fast, then you won't get the right answer. And you're too stupid to figure that out, that a spring and magnets aren't the same as gravity. You're just too stupid. Okay, but in no case is the momentum lost of the system. Um, but you can have kinetic energy that's lost. That process... So, again, he keeps saying it. <laughs> you know, the magical kinetic energy losses that don't make any sound and no heat and no anything. Because you couldn't transfer the momentum. Again, you can't 100% transfer momentum ever and then pretend, oh yeah, we lost a whole bunch of energy. Because the implication is that I just reverse the circumstance and you'd have to gain a whole bunch of energy. Just by banging something into something else. Oh, I made a whole bunch of energy. So sticking it's what converts the kinetic energy. Uh, but regardless, in scenario, uh, we don't have that, so no kinetic energy was lost. So, and he, and I, I can't wait to see how he spins this, but... No, there's no spin, okay? The first half of the video explains all of the, the, the experiments you could do. Magnets and springs. You want to use gravity, I guess. But again, even if I use gravity... Same spring, compress the same amount. I compress the spring the same exact amount. I put the, the two mass, you know, two mass worth object on it, and it only goes this high. And then I put the 
the one mass object on the same spring compressed the same amount. Oh, and it goes four times higher. Does it mean it has four times the energy? No. Will it compress the spring four times as much when it lands? No. It's obviously your fault that you're too stupid to know that all forces aren't gravity. This is something that is so basic. It's right. It's so basic that your physics is so stupid that you don't understand that gravity is different than springs and magnets. You're too stupid. If you don't understand it, then you probably have no business watching physics videos. Cause... Right. You have no business saying anything on planet Earth. If you, don't, if you can't get these answers right, you should fail the open your mouth test. If you don't think that, if you think you can have, you, you can ha keep your momentum and have friction, then you're too stupid. I don't understand them. All right, so I've done my job. Uh, so anyway, so just overhyped once again. You can never fall for the, uh, the way exaggerated um, promises of the trolls. They prove nothing, demonstrate nothing, argue nothing rational, um, and they just make up a bunch of false premises for their arguments. They just lie, <laughs> and that's all they got is lies. And um, fuck you, fuck them, fuck this bullshit. You people are just demonstrating me right on a philosophical argument of mine. I have a philosophical argument that states humans are pieces of shit. Human beings are disgusting, deplorable, crappy animals, and they have no uh, group uh, and uh, integrity. <laughs> they, you know, and very few of them have any individual integrity. They walk around pretending they care about the truth and honor and fairness. They don't care about any of those things. They're all selfish, conniving pieces of crap who are just constantly saying, what's in it for me? You suck. And the aliens should eat you. They should come here and just barbecue us in the worst way possible because the vast majority of human beings have demonstrated us to be a menace to the truth. Humans suck. That has been proven. <laughs> yeah. I'm proving it daily. All right, oh, it's just nothing. No one's making anything like an interesting video. Ugh. God. So anyway, yes, enough of a video. So till the next time and such and so forth and whatnot. I guess I might as well do this. Uh, this has been the Drift Science Video Presentation. Do -do -do -do. Such.